Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big, big. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy, ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official, Miss Jamaica. What's going on? No, 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 my dad. Well, go on. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, our Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, you name it, we're on it. Just Google us, Boss Talk Podcast 101. We'll pop up everywhere, I guarantee you. But a lot of y'all see us on the street and be like, how can we support the brand? Do we buy a shirt? What do we do? Let me tell you what you do. Go over to our YouTube channel and go ahead and not only subscribe, we need your membership. How you find our membership is under each and every video, including this one right here in the description section, there is a link that says join our membership. Do that and you get exclusive content. What I mean exclusive, stuff that people have not seen yet. Y'all will see it first, okay? Guarantee you, and we thank you for your support and we love y'all. Check it, man. Hey, man, we got a guy here today. He don't need no introduction. This guy, hey, man, listen, he done a lot of things with unique fashions boss talk 101 he's 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 one of our fa he's a he's a family member might as well to say huh this guy right here man is in atl we in atlanta georgia we couldn't come down here without visiting our friend our guy daily ranks what's going on man bang daily bang bang daily bang bang daily bang 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 daily ranks for come to bit it again Man. All is well, all is well, all is well. Man, <laughs> man, man I, I love it. I, I love, just really, like I said, I never would have thought that we'd be sitting here today doing this interview because of the way that, you know, times are, man. Like when I was two, three years ago, I never thought I'd even be doing this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, I didn't see it coming. God has a way of, you know, changing the pace and putting you where you need to be. And I think this is definitely, I know this is the right place if for us. If it's just in God, everything will be possible. Exactly. Man, thank you for coming on the show. We're going to get Most into, welcome. we want our viewers to know who Dilly Ranks is. Where he come from? I don't. I know y'all don't know where he from right now. They hear the accent. They know where he's from. Okay. <laughs> they hear the, of course. They hear the accent. They, they think he's from uh, Africa. We no, no. There's two different, totally dot. Let's get to it, baby. Let's find out where he's from. I was and born in Jamaica, but I'm an African. <laughs> <laughs> so you born and raised? Is it Vineyard Town? Vineyard South Side to Vineyard Town, and that's in Jamaica. To Mountain View. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. I know you, of course, went to Excelsior. Excelsior High School. School. Aggie Animal. Okay. You raised with your mom and dad in the same household? No. Okay, raised with your... I lived with, with your... my mom for a time and I lived with my dad for a time. Okay, so he was very instrumental in your life. Yes, both parents. So how did you feel about... Did it even bother you that you had to go over here to him or go over here back to her, that they weren't both in the same household? Um, as a kid, you, 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 you don't even know where I go on. Mm -hmm. So... To go check dad, that's good. And always great to hang out with him. But to live with mama, that's always great too. So mm -hmm. I, just, I, just, I just live. Yeah. Because I, you already know, I grew up with my mom and dad in the same household. And he'd always say, you know, I don't understand certain things. Because he, he didn't have that luxury. And, <laughs> and you know, a lot of people um, that sit in that seat, I want to say since we've been interviewing for the past three years, when I ask these questions, I want to say it's almost 80% of people are raised by their mothers and their fathers are very absent or they're, you know, in and out. And I want to tell you, say, maybe 80% raised by the father too. Really? Because you have some great dads like myself mm -hmm. who care for the kids. Mm -hmm. Because um, I was raised with my mom, as I told you earlier, and partially with my dad, but I learned family values. You know, and I, I try, tried my best to don't do like what, what my dad did over the one side, but it happened to me until I got it together. Mm -hmm. And now I'm, I'm good. Yeah. Because so I, I live with my kids. So once it happened to you, you almost could understand what your dad might have had to go through. Yeah, because, you know, my father loved me, you know, and, you know, sometimes relationship, you try it out and it don't work. Mm -hmm. And when a baby comes on the earth, we never beg for come here. And if mom and dad have for them differences, me not get myself involved in that. Me just love my mother and me love my father. Right. Yeah. But do you think that there's a difference? Um, because you're married right now, you have mm -hmm. children in your household mm -hmm. right now. Do you think that there is a difference in um, when a child is brought up in a household with a mother and father present there compared to when you have to go over here to mom, go over here to dad. Yeah, Does that make a difference? Yeah, it make a big difference because remember, all right, I'm a father of six, mm -hmm. Zane, um, 
the kids them spread out. Mm-hmm. You have to find something for that house, that house, that house, that house, plus this house. Mm-hmm. But when everybody in a one house, everybody eat the same thing, you know, it costs you less mm-hmm. and more love. Mm-hmm. You know, because like my last two kids, you know, they're enjoying mommy and daddy. My first four, they just enjoy mommy all the time and daddy sometime. You know, so it, 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 it's great to have your kids live in the same place with mom and dad. Did that ever hurt you? Yeah, no, the that you plenty, there. Time, plenty of times I apologize to my first four kids, you know, because I told them, you know, I never knew what me I do, I just I do what me I do. And I had to step out to make sure that the pot can go on, you can go to school, you can get your lunch money, you can have clothes, you can have fun. You know, I wasn't looking at um, the, 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 the big picture saying that they really don't need financial support, they really need daddy there. Mm-hmm. But you know, life is like this. You grow up and you learn. Okay, no, because um, I be always thinking about, because of course, as I said, again, I was raised in a household with, so I, I was raised Fortunate very sheltered. to you. Right, but I was raised very sheltered, you know what I mean, in a lot of different ways. So I was not aware of certain things, or as a kid growing up, you didn't think about it. You know, until mm-hmm. you get older, and you start analyzing certain things, and you're yes. like, really? Okay, how does that affect, especially, I love, I always say now, I love the generation that we're in, because we're in a generation where people are reflecting on, why am I like this? Why was my parents like this? Was was their parents treating them this way? Why they ended up like that? Well, you, you have to know this, and um, many people don't get the opportunity to even go to a school mm-hmm. to learn stuff. Because I can say maybe my parents' parents wasn't that educational type of parents who can sit down and talk to them kid. Right. You know, and then my parent. You think education has something to do with that? Though? Yeah, but it's, it's, yeah, I man. think it had a lot more to no, do man. with Ed, tradition because ed, back then kids lot, didn't. Education have a lot really? to do with it. Trust me. Okay. Because when you know stuff, mm-hmm. you're going to do it different. And also depends on how your parents was with you is what you're passing on to your kids. But, but guess what? Not, my, but I'm not like my parents, although I love my parents. I mm-hmm. try to talk to my kids to let them know what time is this. Okay. Back then, my mother tell me, say, baby, come in a plane. Mm. <laughs> she did not. So, so how, 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 how me gonna know say a sexual intercourse bring forth children? children. You know, right? So no. School told you that every, everything open up. But remember, if you're paying attention to your parents, you, you're not gonna listen where school I tell you. Mm. You're gonna go half away your parents I tell you. You know, and no, everything is open. So we are better than our parents, mm-hmm. and I would like my kids be better than me. Exactly, of course. Uh, so a lot of time people always ask us, well, how is the culture in Jamaica different from the culture here? Because I'm learning so much about, especially the black culture here. Mm-hmm. How do you feel the, it, it differs here compared to in Jamaica growing up? As a child, let's, let's start <laughs> off as a child first before you get off into okay, being an okay, adult. Okay. Um, as a child, you know, we never come to America at that time. So we, we grasped to everything we was upon the TV. And you think so America was a better, it was a nice place, especially when I used to hear people talk about New York City. My will want to go to New York. Mm-hmm. And when I got the opportunity to go to New York, I said, yes, so people really, they're crazy over. <laughs> you know? And everything's so crowded. Everything different. Um, mm-hmm. Growing up now as, a, as an adult, you know, I be Jamaican, I live Jamaican, I am Jamaican. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to try to step out of my race. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm try to make sure my deal with people who understand me and who don't understand me, I try to make them understand me because this is it. I am Jamaican. I don't know how to be an, a, a, an American or a Canadian or an Englishman. I am Jamaican. I'm very proud to be so. Very proud. Well, you know, y'all always pull that. <laughs> you can't be Jamaican. I just don't understand. You, you just know. love our food. We love y'all. You just love our beaches. No, we you love, just love yeah, the, no. the, the nice ladies no, from Jamaica. We, we, <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's not that we love. I, love our we culture. Love your culture. <laughs> we love everything about you. We love our music. But you guys has this sense of pride that y'all will just stick Jamaican flags everywhere. Put it on your car seats. You. I'm just. I can't, man. Like. I, I'm like. Come on. I remember I bought that Escalade, 
and we had a little flag on there that mm -hmm. said it was a you know a United States flag. This one, I'm about to put a Jamaican flag right now. I'm saying what? <laughs> because I gotta represent where I'm from. <laughs> we exactly. know where we're I'm in a strange land, so I gotta let you know that I am Jamaican. And you know, nothing feels better to me than when I have that flag in my car and there's a truck pass or a car pass and they're Jamaican as well. So they see that and they honk in their horn or yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. we recognize each other through that. You know what I'm th I'm one thing I'm thankful for. For, and that's that there are not more of you over here because you'd be surprised no, how many of us is over here if, if the driving over there <laughs> oh, oh, oh. So I'm, it's not about y'all I love you cause you would y'all would cut somebody off and be happy at the same time <laughs> say how you doing what I'm like what the hell <laughs> it's a different world so but, in Jamaica we try to be happy with everything at least, at least you don't have to worry about road rage where somebody cutting you off. You have to worry about they're going to cut you off. They're going to pull a gun on you. They're going to be shooting you. But you don't have no to say, worry that, about that. That, 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 that. Right. Because I'm going to do that tomorrow. I'm just telling you, I, I've never seen so many people so viciously driving, <laughs> but then so nice. It's normal. But I know you love Jamaica. Oh, I'm going back anytime I can get there. I, you know? I, know, I know you love Jamaica. Man, I'm telling you, man, it's, it's nothing like visiting there, eating the food. I like the food on the side of the road, as I always tell you. Mm -hmm. It's better. You know what I'm saying? You, you, get, you get the jerk chicken, right? Yeah, thank you. I got to get my jerk chicken. I got chicken. a question because I'm, I explained this to him um, this past summer when we went to Jamaica, and it, it just blew his mind. And I don't know if you experienced this or you remember this, but as a kid oh, growing up, yeah. I remember when people came from foreign, right? And it was a certain scent. She said, you have a smell. Tell. Yeah, man, yeah, man, yeah, man. You have a certain scent, for sure. What? And, and he could not been, understand and if that. The Irish Spring, we're not, we're, we're, you're not come from far. <laughs> Irish Spring soap. If you don't bring what the that Irish was Spring smoke, thing. you're not from America. Yeah, we loved it. And after that, a, a, a soap called Coast. Yes. She said, I could smell the American. Yeah, man. America and he kept trying, man. he's like, do we stink? Uh, and I'm like, no. I'm, I'm going to tell you something. Um, growing up in Jamaica, I, I used to, um, when people used to come to Jamaica and say, yo, the place is hot. Jamaica is so hot. It gets weird to hear. I said, what them people you talk about? Jamaica nice. But since moving to America, and when, whenever I go home, I understand that. Because <laughs> you're hot now. Yeah, I understand that. <laughs> For real. No, I know you understand yeah, I it. I understand it now. I think, I, I th and she does too, believe me, the way she turns. I don't feel the heat oh, in the Jamaica. AC. Not in Jamaica. In Jamaica, I don't feel, the, like when I go home, I don't feel hot. It's like... You Remember, she she was born with mom and dad. AC. In AC. <laughs> no, that's a lie. My house never had AC. <laughs> no, she didn't have AC. But, 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 but you know, but, sea breeze. But she, but she lived, lived right by the beach. beach. Yeah, yeah, beach. It's better, yeah. But the thing is that, but what I was surprised about, and I thought that I would have been hot and stuff like that, I remember one year I went home, and this girl came over to braid my hair, and we went outside, and we were braiding my hair. This at nighttime. Why was I feeling cold? I had to go get a jacket. And I'm like, I've never, ever felt cold in Jamaica, but that night, I remember I was cold. Ja touch it, your man. Ja touch you. <laughs> and I was totally shocked. But I got it. So, okay. So, we, we graduated. So, you went to Excel. So, so, when did you start wanting to do music? Were you in high school at that time? You know, I said, may I do music before high school? Before high school? Yeah, I entered and won a DJ contest while residing in downtown Kingston. Them call it South. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I I was DJing on this sound called Redman Eye Power. Mm -hmm. It's it's Jam Rock International mm -hmm. now, owned mm -hmm. by UJM. Yes, yeah, so down I, south. Yeah, yeah, down south. Um, I entered and won a DJ contest mm -hmm. at, at the age of nine, mm -hmm. and the sound called Redman Eye Power, which is Jam Rock mm -hmm. International now. And um, I I I I was attending primary school at the time. Mm -hmm. So when I, when I took the common entrance exam and I passed my exam for Excelsior, when, 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 I, when I entered the gate, I was already a known star, you know? Because mm -hmm. um, back in Southside... And how old were you? I was nine, year, nine years of age. Nine when I, years, dang. When I won dang. the DJ contest. So, but what, who... Okay, but you just get up one day and say, I'm going to start doing this. Like No, um, we used to sing like Professor Nut songs. Okay. Luton and Stitchy. With, with your with, friends. With, with my friends. We, and then, because I remember all the lyric, my, my friend also Boomers. Okay. He wrote the first song for me. Mm. That's the song that I used. He to. was an older kid or your age? He, he was older. Okay. Um, 
he wrote this song called Two Fall Book Up a Princess Street and I entered the DJ contest and I won the DJ contest with that song. Okay. And so that's when, how did you feel when you won? Great. I feel like. You feel like I this just, is what I, you want to do? I just hit the jackpot. <laughs> yeah, but um, no, my ambition was to become a pilot. At that time still? Yes, at, so, at that time still. So music was a hobby for me. What so was it, what, hold on, what was it that you, you, you saw? I won, yeah, I won a contest. Won okay. a DJ contest at the age of what, nine. What was the... What was the song? A song called Two Four Buckets. Let me get a little bit of it. Come on. It a kiss me ras, kiss me blood cleat. Something my man and me one seat. I go tell you about something happened just last week. Two four buck up down Princess Street. One a yardy, one from 42nd second street. Straight from New York where you find the most freak. Mad team. Man. Mad, mad team. Mad. Man, and, and you won. I won the DJ. I won fifty dollars. And then that did it. Yes. That made you like, I, I can do this. I'm, I'm a, that, 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 that made me a star in my community. Made you a star? In my community. Okay. And, and basically, um, then after that, you still, you didn't pursue the music right no, there. I was, I was attending primary school at the time, so it's, it was more about oh, education. Yeah. Wow, and you see, so you grew up and you knew Miss Jamaica in the neighborhood, and and you knew not yet. No, no, we no, didn't no, meet till later. Not yet. yet them time there. No, you yeah. how how y'all yeah, was in high school when y'all? I'm, I'm a turn high school. And and basically, when you you go to that high school and you see, uh, I, I was there before her. Yeah, of course, because he's older. He's than older. I am. He's yes. way older than I am. Really? Way way older. It, Damn, she trying to make it feel like you. <laughs> yeah, you flunked a lot of school classes. How you yes, end up at that school? It's school, school, man. School I'm, not, I'm playing. School, He's not school. that much older. He's but but when you think about just the, the the way you guys came up, she showed me the school. She showed me the uniforms. Yeah, you guys are totally different than we are in America. Yeah, because you guys wear anything to school. We, we have to wear khaki <laughs> clothes. No, no, no. We uniforms. have we we our son wore khaki clothes too. We got on that later oh, than y'all. Okay, okay, we okay. wasn't on it early like y'all. You guys okay, okay. only did that. We That's didn't. Why but at the end of the day you you got to understand like harborview when i every time we visit there she'll be like it used to be so much better she acted as if it changed yeah the ruler done everything change up man not even just that caribbean terrace where i lived was the best people used to look at it like we 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 where stefana live a producer live on her road. At the corner. So I used to go over there to see the producer and I used to hear her up same time. Well, go on. Aki and him or Ray Ray and she, Mr. Carney would have said, yo, you know her? I'm say, yeah, man, I go to school and Ray Ray Ray. You know? So it's a star road she live on. Wow. Yeah. And, and, and it's a basketball court where she lived too. Up the yeah. street. Yeah. 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 I got, and, and it's a concrete, whatever that. And guess what? Hmm? She's so fortunate. They got the drive-in movies, theater, the movie theater, right, right everything there. right there. Yeah, she, I told you she was fortunate. I told you. <laughs> so, but that roundabout and everything, all that stuff coming right by the, it's See, right by I'm, the airport, I'm right? I'm going to tell you again, she's so fortunate. She's like five minutes from <laughs> the airport. <laughs> See, I, I told you, I told you. See, I'm not lying. <laughs> it's it's convenient. You. Yeah, I'm t I told you. Man, like, so in school, was it when you when did you really develop like, uh, like this passion that I'm going to do music? Or, um, and you gave up the dreams of being uh, a pilot. Uh, um, back in school, wh whenever we have option, a teacher don't come to class. My friend them who know say me can do that thing. Yeah, them used to beat the X. Yeah, I would DJ in a class, make noise and all of that. And then I find out that um, this is what I'm going to do. I start skull school. We call it school school in Jamaica. They skip you, school. Or you guys, we call it that. Start skip school and go into the studio. So whenever I, I go to school in the morning, when we get lunch break, I'm off. Until my father find out. I was about to say, because the school going to call your parents and be like, hey. My father find out I, get, I got a whipping. And I finish school and then I still do the music. I still do the music. I still do the music. And this is where the music took me all over the world. I want to talk about the, uh, the when you won the Grammy. Now, before you get into that, oh, <laughs> before you get <laughs> into the yeah, yeah, before yeah, you get it. before you even get in that, who okay, who was the first big um, artist that you actually did a collab with? And I know that, and even before that, because 
You said the first song you did, somebody wrote the song for you. Yeah, I, so I when did you start writing, and when? What was your first hit song that you wrote? Um, I start scrabble out some things while going to school, but you know, my father, chim, chim, find out some of the school, school at mm -hmm. the time, skip school at the time. It was trick on me, Mister Mister Stone. You remember Mister mm -hmm, Stone, mm -hmm, the guy that's mm -hmm. going to class. Mister Stone used to get my lunch money every every Monday morning, so I have to go to Mister Stone to get my lunch money to to do my lunch. Right. So I have to stay in school. <laughs> you know. But then after I graduate from um, getting the lunch money from Mister Stone, Mister Stone start giving me the lunch money every Monday morning and say, "You take care of yourself. I trust you now, Del Roy. So go and do, get whatever you want to get." <laughs> um. I used to scrabble down my songs and then I, I, I made this song called, I made this song called, um, my first song, Never Done. Okay. A girl song. The girl them up, they never done, nah, done, nah, go put down, grab it up. Y'all pick me, you full up of the gum. And I got an opportunity to meet Chicken Chess. Okay. That, 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 that time Chicken Chess was, was a star already. Because mm -hmm. he had this song called Ragamuffin, My Selector. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, and he produced that song. Wow. I just leave school when he produced that song. So it never do as big as I expected, but it go on with the thing. Mm -hmm. Play many dances. But back in 1993, I did a sound song, a, a, a song that for sound clashes, a song called Sound Boy General that create havoc in the dance hall. Wow. So I can say my big break came in 1993. Yeah. And from that, no turning back. And I, I wrote that song. Wow. wow, that's that's dope, man. You gotta understand, man. Everybody don't get the big song. No, some everybody. I, I, some people try forever and can't get the big I, I song. Want, I want to tell you this, right? Sometimes it's good to try and try and try and try and try and try and try until you succeed. Because sometimes, if you do the first one and it becomes successful, sometimes you don't know how to make the next one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you don't have a catalog. So the song can be so big that it overshadow yeah. your whole career too. You know a lot of a lot of one, one hit wonders. One hit wonders. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to try and try. And I'm, I'm happy that even to this date, I'm not really that man in the spotlight. Yeah. Because I don't like that spotlight. Because the spotlight going to burn you out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But if you stay far away and sometimes you go and sometimes you take away yourself, You'll be on it forever. Because you, you, you're balancing and you love, balance. you love balance. That's how I, I started productions. But you said earlier, you said that you purposely don't do any, um, I would say, profanities or any certain nastiness in your songs. I sing, but back I sing, then, I sing them things that too, man. But okay. no, I'm grown. Because back then you used to. I tried to. not to do it. Okay, okay. Because I need 100% of listenership. Maturity, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because you got to evolve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm not gonna tell people that I'm squeaky clean. I'm not. <laughs> I got a little dirt too. <laughs> you know, but when you know better, you do better. There it is. That's you so know? true. And uh, as I was saying, now when I start doubling productions, mm -hmm. and um, I see where you go to the studio, you mix the songs, you go make the 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 master tape, and you print the record. They call it a stamper. Then you print the record, you get the record label. So I got the opportunity to know from the beginning to the record in music. And that is something these kids don't know. Because you can just go in the bathroom and sing a song and put it in an MP3 and you say, I got a hit record. But they don't know how it was made. Mm. You know? And then I start doing the productions. I got the opportunity to produce Sean Paul. Because mm. ah. he was asking about the Grammy, so I'm getting to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I produced Sean Paul and the and the album called the Dirty Rock. How okay. old were you at that time? Uh, what, which year was it again? 20, 2000, <laughs> 2000, I was twenty six. Okay. Yeah. So I got the chance to produce Sean Paul, and when Sean Paul reached out to me and told me that he's gonna use a song for his album, I was over excited. <laughs> Didn't know it was gonna do so big. Because Sean Paul was big that time. He, he was getting there. He oh, wasn't okay. that big at the time, but he okay. was getting there. Okay. But to be on a project, an album, that's good as a producer. Yeah. And my name going to call alongside that. That's how Dele Rank's name keep raining. Because when I'm not singing, I'm producing hits. When Sean Paul album sold gold, 
I said, wow, I'm going to get a gold plaque. <laughs> <laughs> I've been singing for a while and I, and didn't, I get, didn't one. get a gold plaque. Then it went platinum, mm-hmm. then multi, and then I got a big plaque. Wow. So I felt like, yo, this is what I need to I be did, doing. I did, I did this work and I, got, and I received this. Then I produced Movado song, Movado Breakthrough wow. song. Where they ma do, where mm-hmm. they ma try. Mm-hmm. And the Red Bull and Guinness ready. I produced that song. Mm. Um, um, some people didn't know that I'm that instrumental in that beat because sometimes when they, th- when, when, when they talk about um, that rhythm, I, I don't really get a lot of props. But because I'm not a man who push up myself into the limelight, as I told you, I don't like the spotlight. Mm. I like to let my work speak for me because sometimes them are the words are not work, you know? So I produced my father tune, um, that song called Where Them I Do. I, I it, it Billboard, I did the song Red Bull and Guineas, you know? I start making a lot of it records for myself as Deli Ranks, mm-hmm. and I'm producing a lot of it records as pure music, Deli Ranks. So mm-hmm. Deli Ranks name keep building and building and building and building. And I see that I can balance the music. So I can produce music and I can sing music. And now I'm writing music for other people. Is it hard to balance all of that though? It's and music. still have because then when you have such a big requirement everybody is pulling you to I need this from you I need that from you to find time for your own music uh, but that's when they, but that's when you're gonna put out you have a um, a board that you put stuff that you're gonna do so when, when it's show time it's show time mm-hmm. when it's production time it's production time when it's deli ranks time it's deli ranks time you gotta know that and to balance it, it's good because some art. Right, I'll be in the studio and I'll be like playing a beat, and a lot of songs come to my head, and I may demo them down. And when I demo the song, that song ain't fit me, you know. You know, I'll call an artist that I'm close with and say, "Yo, I have a song here. I would like for you to sing this," mm-hmm. and I'll demo it and send it to them because you can hear and, there. And yeah. So, so, so being in the music for so long, working so hard. And so smart, I get to understand that a hit record will always be a hit record, no matter who sing it. Because most people don't know that the song that Popcorn have right now called Family, mm-hmm. I am the producer for that song. Wow. wow. So when family, I me mean, say family, I produce that That's song. That's dope. Wow. So I'm, I'm not just an artist uh, or just a producer who just produce. I make it records. Mm-hmm. And because I make it records, I understand how to be humble with that mm-hmm. because the more humble you be you're going to get success i got a bone i got a bone to pick with you um um you know a bone you a been, fish bone or yeah, chicken bone. yeah <laughs> you know you you one of those guys that we called on early and when we had did uh unique fashions we needed a a, a song right and we called you and you you gave us this you said <laughs> find it <laughs> Same family with him. Yeah. It's all about unique fashion. Unique hustle. The place to get your best fashion. 11401 Elm Road, Bald Spring. That's in Texas. Yeah. You yeah, have the right fashion for your fashion need. The Grammy Award winning producer, Deli Rang Sesso. Contact Stephanie, R.E. and everything set. All right. Here's enough in my shop. No more different shit. Friends must be followed to offer foolishness. Can we come bring come we get flushed in all the pit? <laughs> so yeah. when we got you to do that, that was that was live and I loved it. But we blew up on a boss talk p- platform and, and it's everywhere. And yes. we get 16 to 20 million views just on YouTube alone sometime in a month's period. Yes. And we hadn't got Daily Ranks to do us a Boss Talk 101, uh, uh, something to where we can get those views well, to hear his what? voice well, all what? over the place. That, that's our family thing goes sometimes. Sometimes <laughs> you're so busy because I'm not the busy one. You are the busy one. <laughs> you're getting the 16 million and 20 million. <laughs> I'm just a man that... I, I need that. I, I'm just a man that hide away from the spotlight. You take, you take, you take it. You got to break. You got to do a boss talk I, one I, on I, one I, drop I, for I will, us. I will, I will. And that way we could play it and, right. and people can hear it. And, and, and you got to throw that Daily Ranks name in there I'll and that Grammy it. Award name, that whole thing back in there this, for me. This billboard, you 
So we can, so we, yeah. Yeah. yeah, because you know we just interviewed because you know we talked about producers. But before I want to say that, I want to ask you. So, but what inspired you to become a producer, though? Who inspired yes, you for that? Good, good question. All right, when I was a rookie in the music, I used mm-hmm. to record on a lot of rhythms for other producers, and sometimes they'll put out the rhythm and don't put my song out. Mm. Hurt. Exactly. Hurt. Um, or if they do put my song out. It come out late when the rhythm already out. Mm-hmm. So I believe in what I, I, I do. I believe in myself. I'm self-motivated. I'm self-driven. I said, you know what? When I, when I start make money, I'm going to buy my own tape to do my own productions because I know if I'm going to do it, I'm, I'm going to put out myself. Exactly. And I, and, I, and I tell myself, whatever I do, whenever I record a, an artist, I'm going to put out the song because I don't want that person to... F- feel that feeling that I felt. A lot of people hold back songs all yeah. the time. You Labels know, do it all the time. The, back in the 90s, I can tell you this. If most of the producer or the producers did put out my song them time there, I'll blow up bigger back then. But I'm happy now because I understand the journey. Everything happens for a the reason. The journey. Because I've learned a lot. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to Behave as if I know it all, but I know enough to keep this journey going. Mm-hmm. Wow. I love it. Okay. But um, oh, so I was, I was mentioning what I was going to say before is that we interviewed um, Caruso. Um, Bonsai, Bonsai Caruso. Caruso. Do you know who that is? No. He's, uh, he's also a Grammy winning um, producer. He, de- he deals with the Marleys. Okay. He did um, Welcome to Jam Rock. Mm -hmm. He did all of that. And um, he was talking about the difficulties um, being a producer and stuff like that. What difficulties have you faced being a producer? Yeah, sometimes you want to record um, an artist. You have an idea or you want to record that artist because to be a producer, you have to have a vision. And I mean, like, Stephanie, I may hear you talking. I may say, Stephanie, you know, I want to record you. I say, yo, me can't sing. Oh, me go sing. I say, I heard it. Come, come and check me. And maybe you come, maybe you not come. But like some of the established artists, you try to reach out. Them go and let them shit can't make party. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you know? Them, mm-hmm. them, 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 them are behave like if they sang it, mm-hmm. I'm the only one that, that's going to benefit. Mm-hmm. And believe me, most of the time, it's the artists get most of the thing. Exactly. I am reaching out to you to put you on, a, on the, another hit record or a, or a semi-hit record to keep your career going. But if it hit, if you get a hit, who gets paid more, the artist or no, the, the producer? The artists get more, more pay, man. Oh, the artists get the paid art, more. artists get more pay because remember, I'm the producer. I'm not going to do any show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, on an overall basis. In an overall. Yeah. Okay. The, because the artists, remember, yeah. the artists are going to get the... 20,000, 30,000, 50,000, 100,000. I'm the producer. I've got to wait until that, I've got to wait until that song, song sell or play. Mm-hmm. But you are going to get the dub play, the shows, the advertisement, everything. Mm. Yeah. So when, when a producer reach out to an artist, I think every artist should reach out. Mm-hmm. Because wow. you don't know where the next hit coming from. I want to ask you a question. Uh, going back to uh, Sean Paul and you guys. Uh, and you get Sean that- Paul and my dance hall king. Correct, and you get that you, you guys get you you win the Grammy together. Um, have you spoken to Sean Paul? Uh, did any work with Sean Paul after you guys won of that course, Grammy? Of course, of uh, course. What other what other songs did you guys do together? I record a song named "It's Your Birthday." I even did a song called "Bossa Bubble." Sean Paul Grammy nominated album last year. I was a producer on that too. Wow. Uh, track one was produced by myself, "Bossa Bubble." Um, Sean Paul also. Link me up with Brazilian singers to do productions and all pr- Brazilian producers. Sean Paul is a great human being. Wow. I love Sean Paul. <laughs> because Sean Paul is not one of the big superstars where go on like him better than people. Sean Paul takes my phone sometimes just to check up on me. That's because y'all got a Grammy together. No. He don't do that with everybody. But, but, but I've worked with artists that um, blow up and they don't do that. They don't have a Grammy with that artist. But they, but they got hit records. Oh, but they got hit records. Yeah. And they just don't but even... They don't do that. Wow, so he make himself pretty much 
accessible what I, I work with, with Wayne, I work with Wayne Wanda another great you did yeah Wayne Wanda is a is, I'm a brother that I'm a big brother that I'm a mentor Wayne Wanda is a man who call me check up on me when we talk on the phone two hours three hours sometime yeah. Spraga Ben's the same yeah Spraga Ben's you know? so you, you, you know I, I'm just saying this for my co-workers to know that you're not bigger than me and I'm not bigger than you mm-hmm. it's a giant effort bring forth it Wow. But I and one ask, more thing, remember ahead. that every big artist or big producer was a young artist or a mm-hmm. young producer. That's right. That's so true. So respect the craft. That's real. I agree. I remember when Buja Banton came home, right? And they had a big, big dance, right? Yeah. Long Walk to Freedom. Yes. And <laughs> you performed at that I show. It. I killed it. Tell me about that experience and how and how big that was for Budja because you and Budja is really really good friends. Yes. So tell me about um, that event and how was it for uh, him because uh, I I saw it but you were backstage with him. Yes. Yes. So yes. tell me about that. Um. Um. I did the journey with Budja mm-hmm. while he was behind bars. I, I was a friend that visit him regular. Right. So when he came out and. The show was put together, and I, I find I found out that I was a part of this show. I was feeling ecstatic. Mm-hmm. You know, I felt great because um, I I knew that the audience were gonna come on the show there. They probably my audience as well because we are from that era. Mm-hmm. So when I got my time and. Everything I know, I know, I know, I know. I, I was gonna kill it, and I know Bojo Bantan was gonna get a well-received show mm-hmm. because the people love Bojo Bantan. He Extremely. made great music, mm-hmm. you know. And when 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 I went to the National mm-hmm. Stadium, that's my first time performing in the National Stadium. Was it? Yeah. Wow. Well, n- n- not the first time like a show, but you know, but when football, like football match, I keep we used to go to go sing a little one song. But right. I'm talking about a. a, 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 a Big performance, big performance right. um, with this magnitude, this m- big massive, mm-hmm. you know, and um, over thirty thousand people. That was great. Mm-hmm. And to to watch about the video and, and and when I look at myself to see that all these people rocking with me, I felt great. And that is one of my best show in Jamaica. Awesome. Wow! Yeah. But backstage with Budjado, I want to get. What was he saying to you? How did he feel about that event? Because that was his first performance after coming out of prison. And I want to tell you, say, to all, to all the, the, the vibe was hectic with Bojo. Men him not really get fit verbal a lot because he was surrounded by a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And I know he was more focused on getting on the stage to do what he got to do. Okay. So we never really verbal a lot. But okay. in boom off my fist and say, Yo, good job, you see? And okay. that's good. And um my next my next um great performance in Jamaica, because I, I did some fest, I did all uh, these great shows, was um Rebel Salute last year. Wow. Uh, what the fuck, Rebel Salute this year. This year. Re- okay. Rebel Salute twenty twenty four. I did I did a great job. Uh, you know the people them say you are going on with yourself. So that's your pride and joy right now. No, I I, I, I love to perform and and, and festivals mm-hmm. because I'm, I'm more mature now I like to get booked for a festival where I can put my show together and go give them a great performance where the people them can actually say yo me never know say, that youth did so great because mm-hmm. majority of the songs that songs that are, are, are sung on the show some people hear it but they never know me do it because mm-hmm. as I told you earlier me not like the spotlight right. wow, let me ask you I want to ask you about um, your trip to Africa Jeez! Mm-hmm. Did you did you uh, did you did you perform in Africa? Yes, I performed in Africa. What? what, what okay, uh, how was that performing in Africa versus performing in, in the United the States US or, or in Jamaica? Jamaica? All right, first, if them invite you to them country, yeah, go on with something. Wow! If somebody invite you anywhere, something are going over there. So my first trip to Africa was Nigeria. And it was great. Um, the people loved me there, you know. And then I went to Gambia with Persian, and um, the vibe was crazy. Also, you know, I've been to Australia, I've been to Japan, I've been to I've been all over. And once a promoter invite you to their country, you got something going on there. Hey, so they already asking for you? Yes. 
Wow. So it's already pre kind of it's already a, a, a thing where it's set to go. You have music where they want you. That's right. They want you. They want you. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Them How would you describe Delhi Ranks and what sets you apart from everybody else? Delhi Ranks are compete with people. Delhi Ranks is be himself, a humble human being, always trying to help somebody. Because Granny tell me, say, if you forget where you're coming from, you have nowhere you're going. And I remember when I never used to have anything. I remember when I only have one pants. See, and three shirt. So I wear my pants. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday with a the shirt. And wash it. And put it behind the fridge. See, I put it behind the fridge so it could have drive. So I continue the journey. And now the Lord helped me to help people. So I'm just helping people. I'm just being humble with my craft. You know? And I'm always willing to work. And any work I do. If I not put in 100% in it, I not do it. Wow. I want to I wanna ask you about um, the Bob Marley movie. Did you go see it? Ah, Bob Marley. Me, me hear them talk about it. So you haven't seen it? Me hear them talk about it. Why not? And it's the second watch, Jamaican go, that we see that didn't yes, go see it. because I asked me, somebody me, else. Me, me watch it, man. Me go watch it. But you see, sometimes you don't run down the hype. You let it go and people go and you listen and then you go watch it for yourself. But you watched it. What did you? What, what stuck out to you about it compared to most uh, uh, Jamaican uh, films that you watched? I had a big concern, just like every other Jamaican, because the other Jamaicans that um, when I asked them, why haven't they watched it, they said the same thing that what I thought in the beginning was the fact that the leading actor who they chose to play Bob Marley, he was not a, a real Jamaican. He was, a, you know, an American actor. But I was like, okay, fine, I'm gonna go watch it, I understand. But when I watched it, the part that stood out to me the most and I was very happy for is 80% of the cast of the show was Jamaican, so they're giving work to the people and I, I love that because I, I hate hearing fake accents when I'm watching any show that has Jamaicans in there. <laughs> I love authentic accent because there's too many actors out here who are Jamaicans who um, can do a, you know. But you know, it come down to the link. Because uh, Jamaicans, I'm not hyping up our, 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 our um, <laughs> nationality, but Jamaicans, we are so creative in whatever we do. Mm -hmm. And maybe a great actor mm -hmm. in Jamaica, we could have done the role, but if not have the link to the link, exactly. so they couldn't put him on it. And again, you're making a movie with that budget, you need a reputable actor. Mm -hmm. Somebody where people want to see. Did you know that, that man before? Sense. But that hold on, sense. did you know that actor before he actually played in that movie? Well, I may never know him, but but it must do something good why Paramount call him in. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they people, have a rep. So people want to see him, and he did a good job because the movie hit box office. Yeah, he so did a really good, good job. And um, our people need to start to understand that, and not because it's a Jamaican movie and it's not a man way. A Jamaican get for start the movie. That no means that the movie is less greater than if a Jamaican would have do it. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes the dialogue is good. You know, him can talk for a lot of people to understand. Because sometimes I go some place, even though me talk, maybe some people don't understand what me I say. Right. So they need somebody to bring across our dialogue so the world can understand. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And that was a big so, thing with so, yeah, that so, was a big thing um, with the movie. Because I, I got to big up my manager, David Smiley, big up yourself anyway there because when he started out managing me, he said, Deli, you have to slow it down a little bit. So people you can understand what you're saying. A little bit. And me never understand what I say till me understand what I say. Because now, I, I just went to Vermont the other day to perform. White people, people non-Jamaican, uh, Jamaicans was there, but everybody understand what I say. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why I told you earlier, I make music for 100% of listenership. Because you never can tell who gonna love it. Cause people always ask me, cause when they hear that I'm Jamaican, and they, some people say that you're they can not still hear. Jamaican. Some people say you're yes, not, I am. Whatever, whatever. She Americanized bad. Shut up. Yeah, well, me and the Jamaican. Yeah, me there. No, 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 no. No, but and and there's like, but how can I understand you? I can't understand. I said people can turn it on and off, and my my family always laugh at me. There's like whenever I go home and I'm around, like Jamaican, then yeah. it just yeah, click in. It click yeah, in. Yeah, 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 you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? So, but for for real, I don't know how to turn it on and off. Mm -hmm. You know because I come America with me a big man, 
So me the too. Ju- so the Jamaican did already in me. It's hard <laughs> to come out. But I try my best to um, speak for other culture to understand me. You mm-hmm. have to because you have to be transparent. You have to yeah. be able to... to, to Sometimes the Jamaican just chip out, but I saw it go. Because like America, like you born and raised in America, sometimes you want to chip off to Jamaican, but you do it and then you American just chip in. Yeah, yeah. That's life. I'm telling you right now, I, I try to stay as far away from that accent as possible. Because so I go on. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> because because it, it'll seem like I'm being fake. No. You see, if you're around us as Jamaican. I'm around, I've been around it for 20 no, years, no, 20 listen, some years. You're, you're around us as Jamaican. I know you love it. Oh, definitely. So if, if I, I didn't. So if you try it, you're not fake it. You try yeah, no, my wife will laugh at me. No, no we laugh because we know you're trying. We don't laugh off of you not to try. We don't laugh because of you. If you want to learn this. Uh, just like I, I'm speaking with you, and maybe I try to be American, and you can know that. Yeah. I try me, I try. Yeah. Okay, give us an American accent. If you were doing a movie. If you can, go ahead. If you was doing a movie. And it depends on, on, on what they want me to say. No, they want you to say, hey, there's a bus right there. It's coming. You need to catch that bus. You need to catch a bus. It's coming. That is <laughs> fake as that. See? That's what I'm saying. But if, if you tell me if I say it in a Jamaica, I'm saying, the bus are coming. Yo, the bus so come. Just come on this. Yeah, I say the bus, man. It's so come. Just come on this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got, what do you got uh, up and coming up and projects coming. that you can tell us about? I got a new rhythm out called Kiambi Rhythm. I, 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 I wrote a song for Tanto Mitch and Devante called All and All. Mm-hmm. Uh, they just shoot the video in Jamaica. It's out now. You can go and check I saw it. That. It's another big, big hit for Tanto Mitch and Devante. Um, I have um, a, a song out called Girl Waste Fear Move. It's a single that I, I think it's going to hit the billboard because I'm working for that. How and you I, know when it's going to be a hit though? I know. I can, you can feel it. The music is, is that spirit that resonates in your brain to, to, to make you feel it. <laughs> uh, I got a song out with Bugle called um, Real Friends. Uh, I'm working on my a EP called Before the Time. Also completed an album called Imperfectly Perfect. Mm. Wow. But, but, I like but, that. But, but, Old but, title. But I, I don't... I finished that album like three years ago. But I keep putting stuff and taking stuff and putting <laughs> stuff in because I want it to be right because I think after this album I'm not going to do an album until maybe five, six years after. Wow. So I want to make this album a hit album that I can survive a for a lifetime. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I got productions, I got a rhythm called Stacks and Bands to come. I got a rhythm called Soul Ranger to come. I got a rhythm called octopus to come. And when you're saying rhythm, for, for some people who don't even know what rhythm a is. Juggling, is juggling, version. No, is that a, like with, with beat, right? Beat, yeah, that's beat. the beat. That's what they call beat. beat. A, I'm glad you said that. Because we, yeah. we, we in Jamaica, we, we make juggling. Yeah, because they don't... What's the difference like, between like, a juggling and a beat? No, all right. The, the beat... Because Americans no, say, the, the beat, okay, do a the beat. beat. The beat, most, most Americans may make a beat with only one song. Mm-hmm. When we make a juggling, we have multiple artists on the same beat. Because mm-hmm. if you notice, all hits from Jamaica, they didn't come as a single. Yeah, but we do Everyone the same fall thing. in love sometimes. Mm-hmm. It was a juggling. Okay, what other artist was on that? Um, Buju Bantan, Sean Paul, Mr. Vegas, Richard They Steven, all was on that. On the same beat. On the same beat. Yeah. Um, Beanie Man song, Who, I, Who Am I? Who Am I? It was a juggling. Okay. You have Sean Paul on it. You have... Um, Mad Cabra, Merciless and all. And you people have, don't get mad about yeah, that. No, and this song, um, Sirani's song. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 no game. No yeah, game. yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. juggling, you got mm-hmm. Assassin and it, Movad and other artists. So most songs that hit the billboard are become a hit from Jamaica dancehall vibe. It's all, always a juggling. Mm-hmm. So we, we tend to like more than one artist and one beat. Are we the only country that does that? No. 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 Well, first, people no, start. No, 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 no. no, no. no. We, you, we, you, we you, did. You're, you're so yeah, well, that's lying. You're so cajun. No. 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 Really? Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Americans did that before you guys no, did. No. Yes, because no. we did it. We called it remixes. People would jump I'm, on I'm, people's I'm songs. Not, not people jumped remix. on people's beats. Remix is different. People talk. They jumped on people's same beat. If the song was big enough. If the song was pretty much vibing, then other people would rap on that song right, listen, and listen. on that beat. Listen to this now, E. I'm going to correct you. You notice? 
the song came out first and then they do a remix. That's right. But in Jamaica, we put all the songs out at once. Without on a remix. the same on, on the, the same, same beat, beat without a that's remix. different that's different <laughs> we, we, we didn't do that no, we don't do that. that that's why i correct you and um you're right the, 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 the juggling it's all always good because you know what you can hear five different characters on the same beat okay that's good always good do one one sometimes goes bigger, bigger than the other one. yeah and, because and again sometimes you have five songs on the beat one song gotta go first but that song that go out there first that the people accept let the other four songs get play okay so that's always good wow that's crazy man i i loved it bro how can people get a hold to you if they try to ah, link with you that's all my right now but there. <laughs> <laughs> um you can follow me on instagram at deli ranks music on facebook deli ranks if you're on twitch i am deli to the ranks if you're on tiktok Delhi Ranks, The World G. Um, and YouTube, you can check out my Vivo channel, Delhi Ranks Vivo. Or you just tap in the name Delhi Ranks, not in a Google it engine, you'll find me, man. I have, I have two questions for you. Who is the next um, up and coming artist in Jamaica that you feel like going blow? And, you know, that's who we need to be looking out for because they're going to be the next big thing. I will leave them there, you know, but you see that youth, I need 450. I use them 450. My like how they gravitate to your music. And if him continue upon that same road where I walk, and he might be big. You know? You have the youth. Me, me, me like Skeng. Mm-hmm. Zane. Um, Chronicle. I'm a tough fuck. I don't want to single them out for people so I'm going to rate them. Mm-hmm. You got a lot of great artists coming out of Jamaica. All I want them to do is take this as a business and not a playing ground. Mm-hmm. Because we are the best when it comes to reggae and dancehall music. And we can't fit in anywhere like water. That's true. So saying that, who is your top three artists of all time, dead or alive, any genre? R. Kelly. R. Kelly. Deli Ranks. Deli Ranks. Uh, the third mm, one is always the hardest because uh, you got to cut people out. Yeah. Enough of them. Let's put enough of them. No, 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 no. You got to single somebody out. Um, Sean Paul. Sean, Sean Paul. Sean Paul, man. Thank you. You so going to help me to get that interview? We need that Sean Paul on this platform. We're growing. We're, we're big we're, enough. We're, we had iced tea. Well, me, well, me have to talk to him. <laughs> you know, you know the man, they're always busy. So, he's coming to Texas. Well, when him, he's when, gonna when, be when in Dallas. When does he come to Dallas? He's, it's on my calendar. I think it's next month. When my father to Texas. See, I, I, I'll send out the link to him and find out if he can do it. Because remember, these people the are, schedule, are, are, are real, real, real big people in this music. And maybe when he might come to Texas, he might have 5,000 things lined up already. Mm-hmm. And yeah. to squeeze your thing in, you're going to say, yo, do you know him not rate Mr. Arca? We'll link out to him. But no. Um, nothing you're not going to yeah. do. But you have people who may think that art is hype at times. Or them that know say we have things to do per before you ask us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and these are some of the things where our artists need to let the people know that we're not here to hype on anybody or disappoint anybody, but sometimes we gotta think about our career first or what we had to do before you come along. Because most times people feel like we don't respect your craft. And it's not like that. No, I don't think we Mm-hmm. It's not like that with us. No, yeah. some, no some, I'm, I'm, some I'm not yeah, talking some, about yeah, some because we, some people. I'm going to be honest with you. Like I just told 3 d T, um, he might not stop this year, but it'll be a time because boss talk is... Yeah, you got, uh, listen, yeah. listen, let, let me tell the people. To the top. All, all viewers. Yeah. All viewers that are watching right now, right? These people are so professional. <laughs> I am so happy that I am a colleague of Stephanie and E. That's because right. Because I know... Boss talk, going to be the talk. Just believe me. <laughs> Anything me say, I say it go. A real, real something. Daily rank said that. Boss talk, podcast 101. Me know them so of them own TV station. So guess what? Subscribe now. Be one of them people eh, We get it first. Go in and go do it right now. Don't even make me have to tell you again. Oh, man, I tell you again. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Hey, man, make sure you guys get in the, the next clip of Daily Ranks, man. Check this clip out. It's Check coming out my right album, now. Silent Giant. It's out right now. Silent Giant. 
you know, 100% reggae music. Check it out. Stream it, buy it, put the money in my pocket so I can continue to make good music and come with great vibe like this. Podcast 101. Man. Boss Talk. Man, hey, check it, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101 where the bosses talk. And we are. Boss. <laughs>